Hi, I'm Christine. Today we are looking at navy blue. I think of navy as one of those knockout colors. When you get the right person in the right navy, it's, wow, this is one of your top five best colors. It is by nature a cool color, so the winters can use it as an excellent substitute for black. Summers can use it as a neutral. The lightest of the summers, the light summer in the 12 groups of natural coloring, would have a darkness endpoint. They wouldn't go too dark, but it would still be recognizable as navy blue. Because navy is by nature a dark color, the five types of winter influenced coloring have a recognizable navy. And by recognizable, I mean school uniform blue, flight attendant blue, banker blue, we'll call it financial industry blue. My benchmark is you go into a hardware store and you find a guy shopping for barbecues or lawnmowers and you say, hey, hardware store guy, what color is this? And he'd say, that's navy blue. That's my benchmark. <laughs> The warm types of coloring, autumns and springs, well, what would navy blue look like? What would it become to look excellent with warm types of skin tones and coloring and to work as a terrific color inside of those closets, the, the outfits that they're gonna make? To know that, you need a color scientist and a visual artist combined in one. That's not me. So I went and found one, and I'm thinking of the late Catherine Kalish, master colorist, founder of the SciArt system of color analysis. Those palettes work. I have used them for a decade. They work in every application of how you make your appearance happen. Makeup, jewelry, hair, it doesn't matter. They don't let you down. I stopped questioning them a long time ago. My job is to try to interpret them and share that with you. Translate what the colors would like look like in real items so that you go into the same stores and make better decisions, spend the same money, come out with items that look better on you than anything you may ever have bought in the past. The panels that we're going to go through today are in the blog post on my website. That's linked in the description box. They were created at your style and the links are also in the description box or on my website, you can go to your style to see the items larger and also to find shopping and availability information. I've also added pins from current retail to the 12 boards for the 12 different seasons at Pinterest so that you can see some examples of navy blue and also navy blue alternatives. If you don't have hardware store navy blue, well then what would it look like or what would act like navy blue in your wardrobe. And that will also be linked in the description box. This is our first panel. Part of looking great is knowing what to buy. The second part of looking great is knowing what to not buy ever again. And the third part of looking great is knowing what to buy instead. And so for a lot of groups, navy blue doesn't really look like hardware store guy navy. It looks like something else. And it's very freeing to realize that you can stop looking at traditional navy blue in the same way that it is very freeing and empowering to realize that there is no point looking at the red lipsticks to try to find your perfect one and have $400 worth of tubes sitting in a drawer that are never going to work very well for you when your version of red lipstick looks like something else. In this panel, this kind of checkerboard, you're never going to need to know them apart. You might look at it and think, wow, that's an awful lot of blue. I, I'm never going to figure this out. Don't worry about it. You're never going to need to. If you look, just limit the information coming at you and look across the middle row, well, you can tell those apart. You could see that those are different shades of blue. Those are the true seasons, the main groups. If you never take it any further than that, great. If you know your main group, and use that version of navy blue, you're going to be doing very, very well. Let's say that your coloring belongs to the three quarters of the world mm -hmm. that are colored as a blend of two true seasons. They don't fit perfectly into one of the trues. They're a blend of two. And you'll see them across the top and the bottom of this checkerboard. Well, now what would you use the checkerboard for? To see if an item you're thinking of buying, a sweater, let's say, could fit into your particular square or obviously would fit somewhere else. So you're a bright spring and you're looking to buy a navy blue sweater. Could it fit into your square? Doesn't have to be perfect. We all have lots of navy blues. We all have lots of blues and lots of versions of every color. You want it to be reasonable. You want it to be able to hang in the same closet without looking faded 
or like an outsider, darker than it is, or neon bright, somehow that just would not be belonging in that closet. You might find the board useful for knowing all the colors that don't serve you. So don't buy them. All those, you know, you should try it, you should buy it <laughs> colors. Part two are looking great, knowing what not to buy. And so getting a sense of ignore all this, here's the one square out of the 12 or the two out of the 12 where I need to place my attention. It's also very useful to know your best neighbor. So thinking back to your color analysis and your color analyst would have helped you with this. Say you were a dark autumn but you actually test really close to true autumn. Doesn't mean you need to limit your colors to one side of dark autumn. I am a firm believer in wear every color in your palette, but when the time comes to make the intelligent shop compromises that shopping requires, you know that if you move into dark autumns, true autumns versions, you're gonna do just fine. Let's narrow this down a little bit and talk about those ideas some more. So we talked about wearing the colors of your true season because odds are you're gonna be just fine with that. So let's say you're a light summer, you can't find navy blue, but there's this really gorgeous blouse in true summer and it's in your style and it's in your price range, fine. Blue for warm seasons, if we talk about spring for a second, how does that work? Okay, to warm a color, you would add yellow. If you add yellow to blue, it turns greenish. Blue is also particular in that it creates better harmony with warm color palettes when it's uh, warmer by adding, warmed by adding red. So you think, I think about red in a fireplace. Uh, that creates a feeling of warmth. And so you'll find periwinkle and you'll find purple as orchid in spring and bronze purple in autumn. I have not shown these in these charts, but your color palettes, and you can find all of this on Pinterest as well, will show you that. And in the warm seasons, it might not look like navy. Same as your red lipstick will not look like red. Just saves you so much time knowing that. Spring blues are greener than summer blues. Spring is also a light season. The three things about spring, it's light, it's bright, and it's warm. So their navy blue is a little bit more limited and maybe any true blue is limited because blue tends to be cool and darker and spring is warm and lighter. That's fine. Uh, you'll find a lot of turquoises, for example, in your color palette. For a light season also, remember that you have got all those neutrals. So everybody's got lots of light neutrals and it would might be pebble, it might be sand, it might be ginger ale, it might be clear syrup, depending on the seasons, but you have many, many alternatives to navy blue. So your palette might have two blues, but you've got hundreds of neutrals that are gonna come from lighter colors and warmer colors. Summers love blue and they own lots of it, but they're also a light group. Um, and navy can be kind of low hanging fruit for summers because they love it so much, but do avoid winter blues. Summers need the softness, that dusty type of color, and you really do want to limit the darkness level. And again, summers, because they're essentially a light group, have many, many, many lighter neutral colors that they can wear. Here we're gonna compare autumn with winter. For autumn, I do not mind saying that this is a compromise between my current perception and what is available. I'm as limited by shopping as everybody else. But if your perception is really different, then I'd love to know it. As with spring, you're gonna see green in greenish blues like teal, and you're gonna see red being added to the blue to create red purples to harmonize with warm color palettes and warm colored people. The soft dark red purple up in soft autumn, that tank top, it's an example of how soft seasons, they can go pretty dark. They don't mind darkness, you wouldn't go to black, but they don't mind getting pretty dark as long as the color is kept soft or dusty. And that what that means is not a lot of color pigment relative to the amount of gray. So if you look at this tank, the tank top in soft autumn and decide how much gray is in that, if it were say a pot of paint, then don't think of the gray as color pigment. Just let it be there, but not part of how you decide the, the brightness. How much pigment do you then have to add to make that color? Probably not a lot. And so it would be considered a soft color. Darkness is a whole different scale. It has nothing to do with how bright or soft a color is. Same is true for the soft summers. 
that those colors may be dark, but there is a lot of visible gray relative to how much pigment blue was added to make the color. True autumn, the warmest of the autumns, so we're into red-purple, we're into um, blue-violet, that's also quite red. Those colors might seem winter, and in real life they might be winter uh, textiles, but in this picture they don't have enough color pigment to work in winter. They're softer than that. Dark autumn, they have dark teal. We're getting into recognizable navy because there is winter in this type of coloring, but there's not enough pigment in the bluer of those shirts to belong to winter. It's still a softer kind of navy blue. Dark winter, very dark, medium amount of pigment. All the winters are very dark and they're cooler than they are warm. The dark winter is the softest, the dullest, the least amount of blue. You can see black in it. True winter, not quite as dark, and maybe it has a little bit of a purple tinge. Could a true winter and a dark winter wear each other's navies? Well, I think they could. <laughs> this is not somewhere that I would put a whole lot of attention for me anyways. Um, I think that there are other colors that are a whole lot less compromising, like yellow, where you could put a whole lot more attention and get a better, better payoff. Bright winter is the lightest of the winters, and it is the brightest, meaning the most color pigment relative to how much gray. Let your eyes look at the uh, bright winter compared to the soft autumn, and you'll see how much pigment relative to how much gray. Could a bright winter and a true winter share each, each other's navies very successfully? Yes, <laughs> I think they totally could. Okay, if you had a bright winter who tested near bright spring, very fair to look at. Lots of yellow in the hair, lots of yellow in the eyes. These people certainly exist. Uh, perhaps then they might not wear winter's darkest navy right up close to the face as a turtleneck, but it would probably function very, very well in outfits. In this one, we are comparing different combination, autumn with spring. So you see no traditional navy till winter appears in the dark autumn and the bright spring. Soft autumn, they get pretty dark. Autumn likes darkness. They do well with it. In fact, they need a certain amount of it to create a facial contour. And here you've got a version of kind of blue-green denim. You also have a dark red violet, but it's soft. It is dark, but it's soft in that there's less pigment, more gray. In fact, if you look at all the items on the page, this might be the softest of all the things pictured here. True autumn. Like, you can just forget about navy. Don't look for it and don't think about it. Focus on teal, focus on soft dark periwinkle, and then move your attention over to all the great, easy to find neutrals you have in dark green, in burgundy, and in browns. Dark autumn does have a dark teal blue, pretty easy. Lots of it in stores. And they could also use a blue black as a navy blue. There's enough red in this to be warm because dark autumn is warmer than they are cool. And it's also muted enough to be an autumn season. Navy blue for spring looks more blue than navy, I think. I would think of these colors as sailor blue or azure blue. If you filter by color when you're shopping online, search for blue green and green along with blue and you'll find some really good versions come up. The True Spring Coat looks pretty good. I, uh, I thought at first that that might be a little bit too bright and better for bright spring, but in terms of comparisons, you get a sense of how the, co the colors are moving from one season to the next. And there is another darker example of a True Spring Navy in the Pinterest boards that m you may want to go have a look at. This is our last picture. For winter, I mean, there are hundreds of navies. Winter's cool and dark. Navy is cool and dark. Many, many different versions. And uh, you'll see here, dark winter is darker and duller. You can see true winter is a little lighter. And the navy is a little more purple looking. They also have greener looking navies, but you're in this ballpark. Bright winter, lighter still. More color pigment still. Uh, either of the neutrals, the dark, could they wear true winter? Sure. The bright, could they wear true winter? Yeah, probably yes. Depends on the person, but probably yes. And they're good. And you're good. You get good at knowing this too. It's not mysterious. You get very good at recognizing yourself. 
For summer, still lots of choices. Most Navy in stores isn't winter any more than most black in stores. It's not true winter. It's going to be lighter as navy blue goes. It's going to be softer, meaning dustier as navy blue goes. And you'll see greener and pinker versions as you move, uh, move through the seasons. The light summer, I would have liked to find a darker color than this. They do go a little bit darker than what's shown here, but this is pretty close. Something I wanted to say about summers and navy blue, or probably any season and navy blue, is that you can find color systems or color analysts who offer to their clients what are called corporate palettes or men's palettes. And they have darker options, partly because men can look darker than women in the same season. They may have darker hair. They may have what look like more pigmented skin tones. They have facial hair, different things that contribute to a different um, appearance, but they still test into the same season, would wear the same colors. And also sometimes business environments um, require darker or more conservative colors or certain occasions are more serious and want darker colors. I think these palettes are great and amazing and excellent and fantastic and I cannot recommend them highly enough because they widen the options of the colors that we can wear. They give you more different colors. Also, they widen our mindset around our colors because we can become kind of possessive. My white, my red, my navy. It's self-limiting when you have many versions of all of these colors. And so the more ways you can see how they behave together, the more relaxed you can be about what might be a good option for you. I am not showing them here. The, the navies that appear in those color books. And I don't include them in most of our talks and I don't include them in the drape sets that I make either because every choice you make, whatever it is, will have a trade-off. And the trade-off with this, with showing those darker colors is they can be harder to choose for yourself. They're harder to select. If you can get them perfectly correct, it's great. It's just harder to do. It takes more practice with the color palette. I don't use them for myself when I shop because it's not necessary. You can make very good choices with just your single classic color palette. And if my purpose in life, or one of them, is to get you in and out of stores buying the best colors that you can, I worry that these would open the door for some choices that might not be quite right for you. I also wanted to touch on a word that I've used a couple of times in this and other videos, which is the word harmonize. And basically it means knowing how to work with your color palette to find those great items that are going to look really, really good when you wear them. And this was a technique that was developed actually or invented by the woman who trained me and is still training color analysts to this day, which is my friend and very respected colleague Terry Wildfong in Michigan also trains and sees clients in California. And, you know, I, I thought about this because recently I had a conversation with a woman who was telling me that the way she decides if colors work for her is she would look in a mirror and she would hold them up to her face. I could not do that. I mean, no, it, I, even if I try to see myself objectively, I can't. I don't think anyone else could. This is a very invested piece of real estate to try to get objective about. And your color palette, the color fan, that's your face. That opened up is what your face looks like. Lay it on a piece of fabric. That's what you look like wearing that fabric. And there are ways of working with that and understanding how to get information from it that the color analysts in our community and maybe all color analysts, I'm not familiar with everybody's process and systems, but with us, our color analysts can help you understand how to work with that color palette so that you can kind of put your face on, on the table. You know, it would be like, how great would it be if you could do your hair by taking off your head, put it on the table, do your hair, put your head back on. It's kind of like that. You can put your face on the table and make objective, good decisions about what you look like wearing certain colors. I hope that you saw some good ideas around navy blue, different possibilities of what navy could look like. And if navy in your season doesn't look like traditional navy, well, then you can stop spinning your wheels and move over to what navy blue might actually look like. And if you see it differently for your season, I hope you'll tell me. I love it when people disagree with me because we both get to see what the world looks like through each other's eyes and we both get to learn something. 
Please leave comments, leave questions, leave different points of view. You know that I love our conversations. I've been so impressed with the intelligent and thoughtful responses that these videos have received, and I am sincerely thankful for every one of them. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye.